Hello there, Pursuing Freedom friends. Thanks, as always, for tuning in today to the Pursuing Freedom podcast. I have an exciting episode for you today because I've been thinking lately a lot as we start approaching the fourth quarter, which to me is business planning season, where I do a lot of reflection on the past year and on what's working and what relationships I've developed or deepened and where my gratitude lies and how far I've come and all these other good things. And I start to think about how can I improve upon myself first and foremost in order to improve upon my business in such a way that any goals that I've set for myself become not only realistic, but inevitable. And if you've been following the podcast for some time now, you know that it's my mission and my passion to help you create a life you don't need a vacation from. And so I'm always looking for ideas on how to help you get from where you are to where you want to be. So I decided to create this resource, this free resource called Set for Success. And it essentially guarantees that you can achieve almost anything that you set your mind to. I mean, I shouldn't even say almost anything because in my own life, utilizing this process and these philosophies that I'm going to walk you through today, I have found that miracles happen again and again and again. So most of you probably know my backstory, but just in case you're new to the podcast or new to meeting me, I just want to enlighten you a little bit on the fact that the early years of self-employment for me, 2007, 2008, 2009, all the way up to 2012, really, were really rocky and really messy. Um, I joke all the time that I'm absolutely terrible at sales, so I have no idea what I was doing getting into a 100% commission sales job in 2007. As a result, by the summer of 2008, I was maxed on credit cards so broke that I actually rode my bike to a client meeting five miles across town in July in Denver because I didn't have enough money for gas. And then the client walked into the coffee shop as my credit card was being declined for a $2 cup of coffee. This is no joke. I was at my financial rock bottom. The client bought my coffee. I was mortified. And you know, from that point forward, I kind of continued to push through and didn't want to quit and didn't want to give up. And so I devoured coaching, seminars, books, you name it. And I sort of went through the motions and did whatever it takes in order to find some traction in business. And if I'm honest, it kind of felt like a grind because the work that I was doing was just that, right? It was work. And it's not to say you don't have to work your butt off, but when the work isn't necessarily necessarily in alignment with who you are and what your gifts are, it can start to feel like a grind. And so wherever you are in your journey right now, as you're listening to this, whether you're new and you're struggling to get your business off the ground or whether you've been in the business for a while, but it's been feeling like a grind and you need to get a reset and get a new spark, um, or whether you're at the top of your game and you're hitting your volume goals, but you're maybe feeling a little bit overwhelmed or you're burning out on the heels of a wild and crazy year as I'm recording this in September of 2020. So what I want to do during the fourth, I mean, going to the fourth quarter is I want to encourage everybody to sort of slow down, get off the hamster wheel for a minute, take some time to reflect, look back in order to plan and move forward with more clarity, more focus, more energy in such a way that you magnetize the results that you've been seeking. So coming back to the tool that I'm going to share with you guys today, I'm going to walk you through, as I mentioned, it's called Set for Success. And the idea is to guarantee you results in whatever category or whatever area of your life you're looking to improve. Typically, it takes about 90 days from consistent activity to result. So if you download this worksheet from the website, again, at pursuingfreedom.com forward slash resources, it's a free download. If you start working on this process and applying these principles in your own life with consistency, keeping it simple, you will see transformation in as little as 60 to 90 days. Whether you're looking to exercise more consistently, whether you're looking to double your referrals and double your business, whether you want to create more time freedom by improving upon the system that you're utilizing or hiring somebody, within 60 to 90 days, you can transform your life and your business by applying these principles. And when I say that miracles have been happening is that when I go back to the getting into the business in 07, being totally broke by 08, kind of muscling through and sucking it up and going through the grind all the way up to 2012 before I finally saw my business transform. 
And then kind of sucking it up, working 24 seven, working long hours, feeling grateful for the business, but feeling a little bit burnt out and honestly contemplating leaving it all together because it was sucking the life out of me. And then finally in 2015, starting to implement these processes, these philosophies, and then realizing that absolutely anything is available to each and every one of us if we're willing to decide that we want something different, commit to taking massive action, and never quit. And so what I mean by that is that in 2015 is when I had started building a team. I attracted some amazing friends and people into my life and my business that ultimately helped us continue to grow the business. Ultimately, we bought a second home in a ski town. We ended up moving to that ski town. Uh, I published a book to help other people build their business by referral in a way that feels authentic and not salesy. Started a podcast, you know, uh, lots and lots of travel, lots and lots of adventure, um, lots and lots of growth in our business. So I look back to the person I was struggling for many, many years. Gosh, I mean, five years of just struggling and sucking it up and trying to figure it out and guessing and throwing stuff against the wall and hoping it sticks. If that resonates with you at all, then a little bit of clarity, simplicity, and much less effort with more focus and more energy can radically transform your results in whichever area of life you're trying to focus right now. So with that being said, I'm going to walk you through this resource that's available for download. It's a free download at pursuingfreedom.com forward slash resources. And when you download it, you'll be able to listen to this podcast again and know exactly how to use the document in such a way that you experience the same miracles that I know are available to you, waiting for you. So let's just jump right in. Okay. So first and foremost, if you've ever listened to my podcast before, or you've ever heard me speak, you know I'm extremely passionate about how you start your day. And I'm also extremely passionate about this issue that I feel is an epidemic in our business, in our society, in our world of running around constantly feeling overwhelmed, overcommitted, overconnected with a never ending to-do list in our brain. We end the day sometimes feeling exhausted and spent and we don't even know what we accomplished that day. And that's all to do with a number of things that we can fix by starting our day with intention. So first and foremost, on the left-hand side of the page, typically I do this either on a Monday morning or a Sunday night. And I do it at least once a week. And it's called the brain dump. And all it is, is an opportunity to sit in silence and write down everything that's on my brain, everything that's occupying my mind. Because Our brains are intended to compute information, not to be storage unit. So if we have our to-do list in our brain, we're actually muddling our ability to have clarity when it comes to problem solving, decision-making, planning, and creating new results in our life and business. So the brain dump can be anything from personal to professional to-do lists, um, things that I want to accomplish in the short term, the long term, et cetera. And I just get it out of my brain so that I can have clarity to be able to focus on what really matters. Then in the bottom left-hand side of the page, you're going to see where I track with a little check mark or an X if I won the day. So winning the day starts in the morning. I don't care actually what time you wake up in the morning, but if you don't take the time to start your day with intention, you're allowing your energy, attention, and in most cases, your emotions to be hijacked by everybody else's agenda the moment you get into that inbox, the moment you start responding to text messages or you go down the rabbit hole of social media, you've literally lost control of your day before you've even started. So I would encourage you that whatever time you need to get up to make sure that you have time to start your day with intention, do that. Even if it means that you get up with the kids and you get them ready and you have their breakfast ready and then you go and carve out 30 minutes for yourself before you get into your inbox. Whenever you do it, just make sure it gets done before you start falling down the rabbit hole of reactive and the to-do list, okay? So the things that I like to do in the morning, and if you need a step-by-step on how to establish a good morning routine or incorporate this into your life, then I highly recommend any of the books by Hal Elrod with the Miracle Morning series. There's one called The Miracle Morning for Real Estate Agents that's really good. There's one Miracle Morning Millionaires I really enjoyed. But anyway, it'll walk you through the step-by-step. But the gist of it is that 
I personally follow this flow. I get up and I have some silence. I like to use an app on my phone to do a 10 minute guided meditation. The silence just allows me to wake up and allow creativity into my life, into my brain before my opportunity for free thinking gets stripped away by the reactive responding to things, getting going with my busyness of my day, et cetera. So silence is about clearing the mind. Second thing I do is I always write down things that I'm grateful for, anything that you're grateful for. There's a really awesome book called What Happy People Know, and he talks about how active gratitude is the antidote to all negative emotion. So fear, anxiety, anger, frustration, all these things can be cured when we actively tap into all the blessings that we already have in our lives and that what we focus on expands. So if we focus on what we're grateful for, we will manifest more positivity into our own lives. The next thing I do is I write down my affirmation. So every month or as long as it takes, really, if I have one specific tangible goal, I like to turn it into an affirmation. So if it's a volume-related goal, maybe it's the number of units I want to close in a month, maybe it's the number of pounds you want to lose, whatever the case might be, I would write down, you know, I love losing 10 pounds or I love closing 10 units a month or I love attracting amazing team members to my business. I love attracting amazing buyers, agents, et cetera. Whatever it is that you're actively working on accomplishing, I like to pick one and I write it over and over and over again, usually about 15 times a day. The next thing I do is I read my affirmations. So I have a handful of affirmations that represent how I want to be as a human being and how I want to show up in the world with my family, with my friends, with my business. And so I'll read those every day as simple reminders to anchor me back to the person that I want to be in order to know what I need to do to achieve what I set out to accomplish, okay? The next thing I do is I read my goals. Now, if you've ever attended one of my business planning workshops, you know that I have a simple one-page business plan that I do every single year. And I print it, laminate it, because I'm a nerd, (laughs) it becomes the bookmark in my planner. So along those lines, a couple of exciting announcements is that for those of you that are outside of the Denver metro area, which is a lot of you listening here, I did go ahead and create an online program called Balanced Growth, which is an online version, self-paced, of the workshop that I've been teaching live for nearly a decade now in Colorado. And it essentially helps you with lifestyle and business design in order to design your business to better support your lifestyle goals. So as a result of doing that program, you too can have access to the one-page business plan. But essentially, I read my top 10 goals and my banner three every single day. Now, those three things, the affirmations, so writing what I want to achieve, reading my affirmations about how I want to show up in in my life and the world, and then reading specifically my goals. What this does is it activates your brain. It literally awakens a part of your brain called the reticular activating system. And I'm sure you've heard of this before. So I'll just repeat it in case you have not. But the reticular activating system is the part of your brain that awakens when um, there's a reminder or a clue, for example. So let's just say, for example, you just bought a Toyota Highlander. And then all of a sudden, or even you're thinking about buying a Toyota Highlander, and all of a sudden you see them everywhere. Everywhere you go, I don't know why, there's Toyota Highlanders everywhere. So it's because you've awoken that part of your brain to, to make you more aware of that coincidence or that thing that's showing up. And so when it comes to goals... When we write, for example, I love closing 10 units a month every single day, even though we might only be closing two or three a month at the moment, what it's doing is it's turning on a part of your brain that's going to awaken to new ideas, um, new opportunities, people that you should think about reaching out to, um, relationships you want to thank or appreciate or deepen. So it essentially starts to create a path that unfolds that you wouldn't otherwise be able to conjure up without turning on the reticular activating system. So there's a science behind doing this. The other interesting thing about this is that because I started with silence, which allowed me to basically think of nothing or anything and wake up with intention, and then I start focusing on gratitude. 
And then I start focusing on my affirmations and my goals. What's happening is that I am shifting with purpose. I am taking the wheel of myself. I'm managing myself first and foremost in order to be able to manage every other aspect of my life. And in doing so, it doesn't matter how I woke up, right? So I, I might wake up aggravated. I might wake up anxious about something, worried about something, stressed, mad, tired. I don't know. Whatever state of mind or emotion you wake up with, right? If we roll right into the reactive like that, in that state of mind, state of being, we're not going to be the best version of ourselves. We're not going to be the most magnetic. We're going to fall flat. So in doing all of this, we're shifting ourselves from a state of negativity or whatever state of mind we woke up in into a state of positivity, gratitude, hope, belief, achievement, accomplishment. Look how far you've already come, et cetera. So there is a purpose behind this and it doesn't take very long. Like I said, if you give yourself 30 minutes to do this, And if it guarantees that the rest of your day falls into place in a better way than it would have without it, there's no excuse to not start your day with intention. There's absolutely no excuse for for you not to have a strong morning routine, which makes the rest of your life easier. It will guarantee your results. Okay. I also put in there a workout or move your body because it's important to me. I think that it wakes you up more. And so if you can move your body, then by all means, but All you need to do there is just check it off every morning. So it's there as a visual reminder. Did I do my silence, gratitude, affirmations, read my goals, and do some exercise? Check, 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 check. Okay, I won the day. If I can win the day four out of five days a week, if I'm counting Monday through Friday, and if I can win the month three out of four weeks a month, and if I can win the year by winning 11 out of 12 months, then there's no question a year from now, you're going to be celebrating massive growth and transformation in your life and business. So now let's move on to the day-to-day. So every single day, this is very specific and business-related. But if you want to grow your business by referral, you are going to need to pick up the dang phone. Now, there are some exceptions to the rule. I have met a number of people on this podcast that have found a way to build their business organically, authentically, in a way that's not super salesy and genuine and it's value adding and they don't pick up the phone, but they are an anomaly. If you want to be successful in real estate business, you need to pick up the dang phone. So it's not hard. It's only hard to pick up the phone when you're thinking about yourself. If you think that the reason you're picking up the phone is to get a deal or get a referral, then of course it's going to feel uncomfortable because it's extremely self-serving and you're not a self-serving person. You're a caregiver. So can you shift the message of your call to be sincere, to call someone you actually care about and give a crap about how they're doing in their life? Literally get to the bottom of what's going on with that. Do they have kids? Do they have pets? Do they have parents? How's everybody doing? How's the health? How's the job security? How's the career? Where are they traveling these days? You know, what are the ages of their children? There's always something that you can talk about in order to find out what really matters to them in their life. Look, the real estate transaction only happens every couple of years, if that, okay? So if we're going to be of value to people, we need to be of value in their real life, not just in a transaction. And by the way, this is something that came up in one of my coaching calls recently. If you're not keeping in touch with your past clients because you're so paralyzed, worried about what they, get, what they think about you, and you're so worried that they're going to think you're being salesy because you keep in touch with them, I've got some news for you. It's more salesy for you to not keep in touch with a human being that you created a real relationship with during the transaction. And then you never followed up with them and never kept in touch. They're going to feel more like a transaction or a deal or dollars in your pocket by you not keeping in touch. than you keeping in touch, showing that you care about them beyond closing the deal and getting paid. So if you can rewrite that script in your brain and realize that you did love that person, you did have fun working with them, they loved you, they appreciated you, and now they haven't heard from you in six months or a year, and if it's been three years, I don't care. You can still call today and say, I am so embarrassed. I don't know how the time has flown. I can't believe it's already been three years since you bought your house, and I have been terribly out of touch, and I'm so mortified, and I just wanted to check in and see how you guys are working out. I guarantee you, if you do this with sincerity and authenticity, with no agenda, not expecting to get anything out of it, but doing it because it's real and you actually care about that person, you will never, ever fail. 
So what I would encourage you to do is if you don't know who to call, you can start by just scanning your database and looking for the names of people that bring a smile to your face. If they bring a smile to your face, if they're part of your 25%, which I've talked about many times, some of the greatest advice I ever got from a coach of mine was that 25% of people will love you no matter what, 25% of people will never love you no matter what, and the 50% in between are fair weather friends. You can have a happy life and a successful business if you just focus on your 25%. So if you scan your database and you see the name of someone who brings a smile to your face, call them, not because you need a deal, but because they're awesome. <laughs> Say hello. Check in, okay? And if it's a past client and they don't bring a smile to your face, then don't feel that you're obligated to keep in touch. If you just focus on your 25%, I guarantee you will not fail. You will have fun doing the business. You will bring value to people and you will see your transformation, your transactions and your referrals increase as a byproduct of living in authenticity. So that's one way to trigger who to call. Another way to trigger who to call is if you download the Build Your Tribe worksheet from the website, which has a list of different businesses, you can focus on deciding that you want to grow your database by calling on your friends and family and asking them to refer you to other business owners that they know, like, and trust, that they utilize, and that they would refer. And then you can reach out to those business owners to let them know that as part of your business plan, you're always building a referral directory of trusted local service providers because you want to be a resource to your friends and family and clients long beyond the real estate transaction. In doing so, you've got an excuse to call your friends and family that has nothing to do with getting a deal. It has everything to do with building more resources to better serve them. Then they're going to support somebody by referring someone to you. And then you have the opportunity to meet that person and decide if it's a fit for you to build a relationship and support them as well. And by the way, when you make that call, to the random accountant that you want to meet because you need a new CPA to refer business to, just get to the bottom of who they are as a human being. It's not just about referrals and leads and deals. If you can remove all that, if you can remove what you need and what you're lacking, what we're missing from the, tra- from the whole process of being in business. And all we do is focus on human beings and what their personal needs are outside of their business needs. You develop real relationships that lasts a lifetime. And again, you start to attract more business than you ever anticipated. So the next thing is I do at least two handwritten notes a day. So typically on the heels of my phone calls, I now have a reason to send a handwritten note. It's actually really easy. If you make five calls and you're always looking for an action item, and I say action item because there's a really good book called The Seven Levels of Communication by Michael Marr, and he talks about leaving every call and every meeting with an action item, meaning that you never get off the phone just saying, if you need anything, I'm here for you. You say, how are you doing? How's this going? How's that going? And you wait to learn something about what's going on in their real life so that you can show up as a resource. So maybe the action item is to refer them to your massage therapist because you just heard they were in a car accident. Maybe it is to refer them to a daycare center because you know they've got a young child and they're looking for a daycare. Maybe you're just sending a handwritten note to say, it was great talking with you and I was happy to hear about blah, blah, blah in your life or I was sorry to hear about such and such. Or maybe you're sending flowers or condolences, but there's always an action. So those handwritten notes can be as simple as sending a handwritten note saying it was great talking to you. Sometimes it can even be a handwritten note to the voicemail that you got. So if you've got someone's voicemail, you can send a note saying, hey, I was just thinking about you. I wanted to reach out. I hope you're doing well. And I was just thinking of you. And, you know, if you ever need anything, I'm always here for you. That's enough. Okay. So at least two handwritten notes a day. And then below that, you've got your top priorities. I know I do so many book recommendations, but I'm telling you, reading books has changed my life and given me a million ideas that have been implemented that have resulted in massive transformation. So another great book is called The Power of Less. And it focuses on having three MITs every day, MIT for most important tasks. So the top priorities are typically my MITs. What are the three things that if I accomplish those today, I've won the day. And then I like to estimate how long will it take me? Here's why. Sometimes we have a to-do list in our brain or on paper that feels a mile long. And as a result, we feel in a state of constant overwhelm, of deciding, decision-making. What do I do next? What do I do first? And that decision-making process in and of itself is actually energy depleting. And so 
when I can map out my top priorities for the day, the next thing I do, and I look at my other to-dos as well, the next thing I like to do is I like to put a note of how long I think it'll take to do that thing. And then as a result, I, I come to realize that I really actually only have three hours of productive work today, or maybe I have five hours of productive work, but it's certainly not a 12 hour day. It only becomes a 12 hour day when I don't prioritize, when I do respond to emails in real time and I'm reactive the whole day long. And then I get to the end of the day and I'm exhausted and I feel like I still have a ton left to do. That only happens when I don't take the time to do this process. So a lot of times what happens is I've got this big looming thing in my brain and, I, and then when I write it down, I realize it'll probably only take me 45 minutes. So then after I do it, I like to track how long did it actually take Because I like to see, am I overestimating how long things take me? Am I underestimating? Is that why the day seemed longer than it needed to be? I'm a huge proponent of having less work with more output. So more focused work with greater results followed by focused free time or unscripted time. So I'm not a big fan of scheduling every half hour of every day. Uh, I, am a, I am a fan of time blocking to execute on the most important priorities of the day and then leaving plenty of white space for all the other minutiae to fall in. So the other to-dos could be anything. It could be, I need to order a birthday present for a spouse or a friend. I need to um, pick up the dry cleaning, go to the grocery store, you know, other random things that need to happen. So sometimes it might be just managing my inbox. Now, if you're going to check email at every stoplight and in between every phone call and in every nook and cranny in your day, instead of carving out the time that you're going to manage your inbox completely, then email can take hours of your time in any given day. But if you time block your inbox during certain intervals throughout the day and you really purge it completely during those windows, you can significantly significantly condense the amount of time that you're spending doing busy work that isn't actually productive or moving you closer to your goals, okay? You have to think always about cause and effect when it comes to business. So your first priority is always to deepen relationships, build relationships, and develop opportunities to do business. Your second priority is to nurture those transactions. And so if we stop doing the proactive because we're preoccupied by what's right in front of us, and we're not looking 90 days out, then what happens? You've most likely experienced this if you've been in business for some time, is that you have a spike in business, everything goes to the wayside except for nurturing what's right in front of you, and then 60 to 90 days later, your pipeline has dried up significantly, and then you have to get back to the business development activities. But if you can organize your days and organize your weeks like this, You'll be able to bring more focus, more energy, more clarity to everything you do, resulting in a ripple effect that's positive and magnetic, which will attract you more of the right kinds of relationships that fall into your 25% because you're working with intention towards your 25%, towards people that love you no matter what and support you and you love them. And you're showing up as a human being in their life and being of value. Next thing you know, you're attracting more like-minded people. So. Um, at the bottom of the page, it just has notes, ideas, and people. What I like to do is that as I'm doing my affirmations, as I'm doing my goals, as I'm reading, etc., I don't want to turn off the ideas that pop up. I was making this mistake at one point last year in 2019. I was trying to grow the transactions per month from three a month in February to 15 a month. And I kept on writing, I love closing 15 a month. I love closing 15 a month. And I was having ideas come up and I kept saying, like basically trying to turn off my brain to these ideas because I was super busy doing my affirmations. And then I started to realize, hang on a second, these ideas are a result of the particular activating system. So because I'm writing, I love closing 15 a month, all of a sudden names and faces are popping up in my mind, new ideas, like maybe it's a class I'm going to teach. Maybe it's an event I'm going to host. And so something's coming up. I'm awakening to new ideas. So it's important to listen and tune in. And so I like to jot those down at the bottom of the page. And so what I'm doing is if you'll look at the resource and you'll see that the calls to make aren't necessarily the calls I did, it's the calls I intend to make. So as I go through the day, if I am focusing on, on 
executing with consistency and simplicity, I'm a little bit more present, I find. I'm not so scattered. I'm not so distracted. So with every interaction I have, I'm better equipped to be fully present with that interaction, to be fully in tune with the person I'm conversing with, whether it's over the phone or in person. And so I'm able to then tune into who they are and what their needs are. And then that gives me an idea of someone I need to reach out to, to connect them to, or something I can do to follow up, et cetera. And so those notes and ideas and people, they get jotted down at the bottom of the page and then they fall in line throughout the week to the people I intend to call, okay? And sort of the why behind it. And always, always, always remembering that with every phone call, I'm never calling to get a deal. That's never the agenda because if it is, which is all the training I got the first few years in the business is make the calls, ask for the referral. And guess what? Even when I did it, it didn't feel good. And so the results were okay. Okay. So you can push through, you can muscle through, you can suck it up, you can do the work and all these other things and you'll get some results, but you may never feel in flow and you may never feel the joy that's available to you. And when you find that joy and that authenticity and the truth of connecting with human beings, wherever they are in their lives and giving value in whatever way they need now, which has nothing to do with the deal they closed on a year and a half ago, you're going to find that there is no more chasing business. There is only attracting. You will never feel like you are in need of anything. You're only going to feel the joy that comes from being of value. And then suddenly, seemingly miraculously, you're going to see your business grow as a byproduct. So I would highly encourage you guys to download the resource from pursuingfreedom.com forward slash resources. The last thing I want to share with you is that on Sunday, I like to go back through the week and I look at the calls I intended to make. Did they get done? The notes I intended to write, did they go out? Did I execute on my top priorities? How did I do on my morning routine? Was I consistent? Okay, how's my brain dump looking? Did I check anything off that list? And then I can do my next brain dump, right? Because new things are always arising. And so I have a little reflection section on the bottom right for Sunday, which is just a simple yes, no. And always, always, always looking to work on setting limits and setting boundaries. What I mean by that is when you're working on your top priorities and you have an estimated amount of time, 45 minutes, you're setting a limit for that. You're having boundaries around that. So you're not multitasking, checking text messages and emails while you're working on this proposal or this presentation or whatever it is you're working on. Okay? so. Focusing every day on first and foremost, managing yourself so that you can be the best version of who you want to be in order to know what to do to achieve what you set out to accomplish. Okay. Second, keeping it simple. Take the agenda out of it. Make connections with people. Be yourself. Be authentic. Be filled with energy and joy and you will not fail. You cannot fail. I guarantee you, if you utilize this and you implement with consistency for the next 90 days, you are going to see something, some miracle is going to show up in your life. Um, Now, keep an eye out on the newsletters that are coming out over email. If you haven't already subscribed, go to pursuingfreedom.com and make sure to sign up for the newsletter because we have some exciting things happening this fall with business planning with some free webinars that are going to be coming out, and all kinds of good, juicy stuff to help you on your journey for building a life you don't need a vacation from. As always, I love and appreciate you. Make it an awesome day, and we'll see you next time.